TV2 Southwest. A new season of Close Up starts now as Lisa Holland tells the inside story of how a team of engineers in Plymouth wrote themselves into the history books, The Night the Earth Moved. It's the gateway to Plymouth and beyond. The A38, a vital artery running through Devon. It leads to one of the busiest road junctions in the southwest, Marsh Mills, used by more than 75,000 vehicles every day. On and off, they've toyed with the troubles of Marsh Mills for the last quarter of a century. Roadworks have become a fact of life here for motorists. Now, the final chapter is about to be written. They're hoping to cure the problems once and for all by sliding new slip roads 40 feet sideways in an engineering feat never attempted before in the world. The system has been worked before on simple bridges, but as far as we're aware, it's never been attempted anywhere in the world with something as complicated as this. It's a quarter of a mile long, it's on a curve, and it's up in the air. But that's not all. In addition to the construction complexities of the road itself, they must negotiate the physical and man-made difficulties of a river and a railway. The engineers, it seems, will have to move heaven and earth to turn their dream into a reality. The viaducts were built in the late 60s, but within 10 years they were diagnosed as suffering from concrete cancer. In the world of engineering, a terminal disease which could only result in their eventual demolition. Concrete cancer is a layman's term for alkali silica reaction. What happens is that this reaction forms a gel on the surface of the concrete, and when this gel comes in contact with water, it causes surface cracking. Once this cracking appears, air and water can get into the reinforcement causing rusting which causes expansive forces then to crack the, the concrete and the, the, the reaction then goes on and on. For years the slip roads were temporarily shored up but a long-term solution would one day have to be found. Adjustable Roman style pillars were put up on either side of the decaying piers to support them. In the late 1980s, plans were drawn up for a flyover which would relieve the roundabout and the slip roads of through traffic. Work began in 1990 and was completed two years later. It was a great relief for motorists in the southwest and on the day the flyover went into service, a remedy for its doomed feeder roads was announced. These have been weakened by concrete cancer. Before long, they must be demolished and replaced. Work has had to wait for completion of the flyover to avoid complete dislocation of your road network. But we hope that work will start next year and take between 12 and 24 months at a forecast cost of about 15 million pounds. If the slip roads were to be demolished and rebuilt in the traditional way, each side would have to be closed down for at least nine months. An imaginative and cost-effective approach was the order of the day. There were big incentives for whoever won the contract to keep the traffic flowing for as long as possible. Every day you close the road, you have to pay the uh, highways agency in the region of £30,000 a day. That's something that we've tried to avoid. It's there to make contractors uh, try and come up with schemes that keep the road open for as long as possible. Hockteef's first plan was to build a temporary bridge on either side so motorists could use these while the old slip roads were being knocked down and replaced. Um, we then started thinking, well, if we're going to build a new uh, a temporary bridge, why not build a permanent one alongside? So build a permanent slip road on temporary supports and then could we move it? 
It was at that time our designers were starting to have similar thoughts. And at a brainstorming meeting, we suggested uh, this idea. The designer had also come up with the same solution, but he wasn't sure that we could build it. Um, we weren't sure if they could design it. So the two thoughts came together instantly. They knew they could design it, and we knew we could build it. So that's how it went ahead. And this is how it will work. Two new slip roads will be built on the outside of the existing ones and the traffic transferred onto them. The old viaducts will then be demolished and the new ones slid across on separate weekends into their permanent position. The Exeter bound side will go first. The boys of St Boniface College enjoying a game of rugby in the shadow of the bridge. Eighteen months ago, their playing field was larger than this, but some of it has been leased to Hockteeth, who need the extra land for their new slip roads. The man from Hockteeth rang us and said they'd like to come and talk to us about leasing some land from us to build the bridge. It's not an unreasonable sum of money that we've got. Uh, in the first year, it was spread over two years, it helped to finish paying for an administrative extension that we were already in the throes of building. And in the second year, the money helped to ensure that we had no redundancies with the cuts that have taken place in the budgets in Devon schools this year. But it was obviously very much an industrial secret as to what they wanted to do. And in consequence, they asked us to keep quiet about their method and why they wished to lease the land. The first thing that had to be done was to build the new slip roads alongside the old ones and transfer the traffic onto them. The new road decks were constructed on ten temporary trestles. At the viaduct's highest point, these stood 40 feet tall. Now, the old slip roads could be demolished. All manner of machines were brought in to tear them down. Munching, crunching, pulverizing the solid mass of concrete and steel. It went on all summer, and limb by limb, the road was torn to the ground. But the beams which lay immediately below the road surface itself required meticulous care. The beams are very highly stressed. Um, they have uh, a series of strands within them, heavy steel strands, which really act like um, very strong elastic bands. And you can imagine there that if you just cut an elastic band that was under tension, it would fly anywhere. The same would happen with these beams if we didn't uh, approach it in a careful manner. Uh, the way we uh, remove the beams is we support the beams on two cranes at, uh, towards their end points and we then cut either side of the cranes so that the stress from the uh, strand is relieved at each end. The beam is some 15 metres in the air so it's very difficult to get to and is solid reinforced concrete so it's very difficult to break through. Now it cuts through the beam in a matter of minutes, something like 15 minutes. Now if we were to actually put men with, uh, with pneumatic tools on that, it would probably take something like two days. And they'd be very tired afterwards. The old slip road blitzed, the new rose like a phoenix from the ashes. From the rubble grew the supports onto which the new viaduct would eventually be slid. And as the towering structure emerged on the surface, below ground great care was needed as the foundations were laid to avoid damaging the two kilometre network of electricity, gas and water cables and pipes. More than 200 men and women are employed on the project. Hockteeth has its own team of engineers who travel around the country to wherever the work is. But there's been a lot of employment for local people like Woody and Will, who are carpenters and travel to the site every day from their homes in Newquay. Do you enjoy working together? How long have you known each other? I've got this he guy from six in the morning until seven at night, seven days a week this he week. He picks on me. <laughs> 
Yeah, we get on all right. I mean, it's yeah, like anything. I mean, if you live together long enough. I usually go to sleep. <laughs> At the end of their working day, Woody and Will set off home for Cornwall. For others, though, the job means long periods away from their families. A huddle of huts and caravans a stones throw from the site is home during the week for many of the construction team. I suppose it's best described like the television programme, Old Vita Zane Pet. We're all, we live much like that programme you know, showed you. Um, we work together, we mess together and um, effectively we sleep together. With regard to food, we sort of pair off. Uh, me and Jones mess together. It's one of the comforts. <laughs> Ten days to go and high up underneath the viaducts, the slide tracks are now the focus of attention. The slide will move on a downhill camber. If it's to be properly controlled, the braking system will be just as important as the powerful jacks. These will pull the road across the slide tracks on a fine white slippery membrane known as PTFE. It's a project which has attracted international attention. Even the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan on a state visit to Plymouth was keen to signal his approval. <laughs> on the night, there'll be an engineer to monitor progress at each of the ten slide points along the quarter of a mile viaduct. I'm very pleased to be part of it and quite excited to be part of it as well. Um, a bit nervous, hopefully everything's going to go all right. I know that it has been well planned, well designed and well thought out, so there, there should be no, no hiccups on the night. BBC Traffic and Travel from Radio Devon. A warning for drivers using the A38 at Marsh Mills this weekend. From 6.30 this evening, the northbound onslip will be completely closed. That's to enable the new viaduct there to be moved into position. Friday, October the 6th. The weekend of the slide, and it's pouring with rain. Just before midday, one of the lanes of the slip road is closed to traffic as final preparations are made. This is the great night. This is when it's all going to happen. 18 months where it's all going to come to fruition tonight. All the excitement. Everybody's really getting wound up about this now. They're uh, trying to have some rest. Those who've got to work all night and uh, the rest of them that are starting the early shifts. Everybody's bubbling pretty well. Me? Well, I've been sort of uh, a bit, un bit unsettled all day. I've uh, had to try hard today to make sure I've been doing all I need to do because um, there's been a lot on my mind and all my colleagues there are all very, very nervous. The weather, well, it's not doing us, any of us any good. It's uh, obviously a nuisance, but one thing about it, it's going to keep the, the, the slide track clean. There'll be no dust on the slide track with the amount of rain we've had today. It's half past six. The exit-bound slip road is now closed completely. They're hoping to start the slide at 2 o'clock in the morning. If all goes according to plan, the slip road should be reopened in its new position on Sunday evening. It's 6.30 and the road has just been closed. The last cars to travel on the exit-bound slip road in its old position have now gone. Already the workmen have swung into action. It's a very tight schedule and lots to do if they're to meet their deadline of the big slide at 2 a.m. tomorrow. The diversions are now in full operation, but traffic on the flyover and the other slip road into Plymouth is unaffected. The first job is to remove short sections of road at either end of the viaduct, freeing it up for the move. They can now be lifted away. For Ray Bradbury, the tension is mounting. There's not a second to lose. All along the road, the pre-slide work continues. Down below it, Woody and Will are closing off the public footpaths which have been kept open until now. It's no longer a safe place to be, not least because five and a half thousand tons of road are about to be moved around overhead. A small fire breaks out on a lighting generator. There are hazards all around. 